and we are back for more dream hunt yep we're doing a we're, we're kind of doing a little backtracking trying to get through some of this essence area um, gather a 2400 essence yeah make our way towards that hunt well not 100 percent completion but uh, uh good ending decently good ending. yeah decently yeah. good ending no i'm gonna go back over this the one. preferred ending the yeah. ending that people prefer the, the one that they prefer, really? The one that they prefer, yeah. <laughs> I don't think most people like bad endings. Usually when a movie has a very dour ending, many people are usually upset. It's less than ideal, would it's you say? It's less than ideal. I like dark endings every now and then, um, depending on the story. Yeah. But some people, oof, what is does not sit with them well. What is the movie with uh, the guy from Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe, and he has like has a son, and he's going back to invest. Whoa, investigate like a haunted house, or something like that on the waterfront. And his son. I'm not sure. His wife had died, and some. Is shit. he old enough to have a son? In my mind, that's he's right. It looked like it, it, well, he wasn't, huh? In my mind, he's perpetually twelve. Did he, I? He never ages. I've never even seen a Harry Potter movie, too. Really? You've never seen it? Nope. They're never good. Seen They're good one. movies. I never thought they were bad. I've just never cared to watch. I've never been into the Harry Potter scene. When yeah. I was a kid, and when it came out, one, I was really, one. I was in church at the time. They're like, it's the devil. It'll make you go to hell. And while I didn't, It'll make you go to hell. Watching it'll make you go to hell. Oh, shit. While I didn't hell. believe them, I was like, well, I, okay, we that's fine if you guys believe that. That's dumb. I'm going to keep playing Pokemon and reading <laughs> Star Wars books. That's what it came down to. Like, oh, man, you should read Harry Potter. It's the best. I'm like... But Jedi's and lightsabers and spaceships and <laughs> swords and combat and Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan Kenobi. I got shit to read, it man. Makes, it makes sense that they would uh, be sad about other things taking up their time. Yeah. And their and their oh, god damn it precious resources came down to Dragon Ball Z and Star Wars uh, or read Harry Potter. And to me, he was this kid with glasses who had a scar on his head. And I was fucking already a kid with glasses. I didn't need to be Whoa. reminded about nerdy kids with glasses. I was one. <laughs> I wanted to watch grown men in orange geese beat the shit out of giant aliens. Orange gee men? Orange gee men. <laughs> oh, don't hit me. Um, For a while there, I would make fun of Harry Potter just yeah. because I got tired of everyone talking about it all the time. And then, as you know, yeah, I'm a very contrarian. So <laughs> Harry Potter is extremely popular. So I was like, "Fuck you guys!" <laughs> I'm watching my Dragon Ball Z and anime, and Outlaw Star, yes, and Yu Yu Hakusho. So and I'm gonna go sit in my room and play Kingdom Hearts and draw Ansem the Wise. <laughs> the reason I brought it up is because the movie that he was in had a very like sad ending. Where yeah. like, spoiler alert, I guess, in case you guys, I mean, whatever the movie is. Um, he uh, ends up dying in the end, like, mm. and then he's like reunited with his, with his son and wife, I guess. Yeah, like my uh, girlfriend's we're, really so into. Isn't back? Wait, wasn't no, she a not. ghost? She did, but she's not a ghost anymore. Okay. The well, reason my girlfriend's we're going back really is... into Harry Potter. Why are we going back? Because uh, uh, I think it was Fume Knight said that we can come back here and talk to the white lady again with the Defender's Crest on, and it gives us some interesting dialogue. Ah. And since it was so close and we thought we were coming back for cloth anyway, um, you know, might as well try it out. But yeah, I said I didn't really like Harry Potter, oh, and very oh. a couple dates in, she's like, that might be a deal breaker. <laughs> white lady? Uh, was this me? Yeah. <clears throat> that scent. Does another travel with you? Is that you, Ogrim? My mighty knight. I cannot see you, but then time is clouded my eyes. Oh, shit. And I cannot see much. Even your booming voice falls silent upon me. Only this small one I register, if maybe because it shares some piece of myself. This one stands clear upon a misted world. Ha. <laughs> But, my my, that potent smell does recall such joyous memories. Only a short moment we had together compared to ruin we now endure. But, what shining times they were. I'm grateful you would visit, even if to see me in somewhat faded form. Okay, that's very sweet. That's pretty cool. The dialogue flows so much better in this game compared to Pyre. <laughs> <laughs> we just got done doing a fat load of uh, recording Pyre. Ah, oh, goddamn it! And I, yesterday, I and really like Pyre, and it's great. Um, but yeah, it's very taxing because every character has its own 
specific way of speaking mm -hmm. and a lot like some of the characters are very um i don't know aristocratic mm -hmm. very uh, elegant, wait, very elegant sounding. speech patterns to them so it makes it hard because we're doing different voices for all the characters mm -hmm. it just makes it difficult sometimes to kind of <clears throat> do all those different inflections and reset your mind headwind is very don't Who's one of the like starting characters? He's very easy to speak with. Like yeah. he doesn't have all that stuff. But then you get to some of the later characters in the game, and you're like, holy shit, what is going on with this English? Why is there so many commas and semicolons? I don't even know how to process this. Hey, they wrote it kind of silly, yeah. silly sounding. Uh, so I'm gonna be going for the grave that is down here. Okay. And to the right, because that should get us close to as much essence as we need. So I know, back to Harry Potter, I know Jen's really into it. Yeah, she likes Harry Potter Did a lot. you ever she, really get into it? I read like, oh fucking. I read, uh, I think there's like, there's like eight, eight books. books. I think I read like six of them. Oh wow. So you um, knew Because them. we got extra credit for doing it in book reports and stuff when I was oh. in elementary school, because they were so long. Were they? And really, I, I kind of needed that for my grade. <laughs> I guess they did come out when we in elementary school, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I remember, uh, I remember when they were casting Harry Potter and my teacher was, my English teacher was like, oh, these books are great and they're really, oh, don't explode. And they were, uh, and they're really good. You should, you should check them out. So we checked them out and then we found out who uh, they cast for Harry Potter. And I was like, that doesn't look like how I anticipated him to look. That's going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt about Scott Pilgrim. So I was like, man, my, I mean, I was Sarah. I don't know. <laughs> I was such a film. And I watched and I was like, I was yeah, seven. <laughs> I was right. Michael Sarah was not a great choice. I liked them. Oh fuck! I liked, I the liked movie. every. Ca I liked the movie too. Jen didn't like the uh, casting of Michael Sarah either. He's the one character in that entire. I felt they nailed everyone else. Yeah. But I feel like Michael Sarah only got in that film because he was the popular actor and he played that. That's very likely. Preteen kind of in his early twenties guy who's Oops. really who's really funny and I like Michael Sarah a lot. Everyone. Super bad is hilarious. Yeah, I like Michael Sarah. Um, but. I had, no, I had no problem with it, really. I didn't have a problem with him, but he wasn't who I imagined for Scott. Yeah. Scott. There we go. It's funny because they did the voice acting. Like, they did a little animation of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and mm -hmm. they had Michael Sarah voice it. And I was going, oh, that's Scott. <laughs> but when I watched him in the film, I was like, that's <gasps> not Scott. Oh, no. Yes. Not him again. We get to talk to him. Huh? The queen. The queen is coming. I've been waiting so long, and now she's almost here. I can feel like I'm about to burst. I've kept it safe, this sacred garden. I've kept it safe all this time. And now soon the queen will return and teach me to fly. <laughs> Is he a fly, caterpillar? Fly, fly, fly. <laughs> he kind of does look like a caterpillar. Shall we wait together, stranger? Shall we play together? Yes, Marmu, let's play. Let's do it, buddy. Where are... Oh, shit! <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, it looks like you figured out how to fly. Oh! Oh, shit! He's a fucking bouncy boy. This is the guy that came out of the grub. Ah! Uh, what came out of the grub? Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. He just bounces around. But yeah, no. as much as I fun make fun of the Harry Potter um, stuff, I think the books are well written. Um, yeah. And I think the movies are well received, so I have no reason to think it's bad. I've just never seen it. I've just oh, never fuck. had a reason to dive deep in it, though I'm sure at some point... <sighs> My girlfriend will ask me to watch the movies. They're not bad movies. Dude. They're not they're good. They're they're good. I'm gonna get my ass kicked here. I've never been. Off. It's one of the reasons I was hesitant to play D and D at the beginning too. I've never liked that aesthetic. Um, well, which one? The wizards and warlocks and whatever. Oh, like uh, the way uh, the old the fantasy, old medieval fantasy. Because fantasy, fantasy. I've never liked the artwork. I've uh, never been a fan. I've always associated with. People who didn't bathe and wore the same shirt for two weeks in a row. Hey man, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do the bathing and thing. And that's but... <laughs> wrong and messed up, but the people that I knew when I was growing up um, that were really into fantasy and dragons and mm. dinosaurs were the kids that never bathed. Yeah, okay. They, they were the, I get you. They were the kids that were just even weirder than I was, and I was a pretty weird kid. That is a logical concern for D&D, &D because a lot of places are like, oh yeah, you go to these D&D uh, &D shops, or the, or the game stores and stuff like that, and it's like, you have to remind people, like, hey man, you're in a public setting. Maybe like, you should put on some fucking deodorant. Put on some It's not all of them, and it's the rare occasion so where that it's like, reminds you have to tell me. them. When we went into um, our local D&D &D store, mm -hmm. and you, with you and Jen, it was after we went to get sushi. Um, I remember Jen walking past the guys playing D&D &D and all of them went, oh, 
And they just like shifted their heads and just looked like, it's a girl. It's a girl. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. <laughs> it's fucked up. But they did it. <laughs> Perhaps the te- te- uh, queen will teach us both to fly straight. That would be fun, wouldn't it? He says he's going to go to sleep while he's waiting for the queen. You go to sleep, buddy. You earned it. It's a little fucked up. Oh, I'm so close. I need one more. It ghost. was kind of like they're like, who is this stranger in our domain? <laughs> There's no girls that come at this time of night. Well, I mean, there are girls that go in that store though. I've been to I've that store a couple other times. I've seen a store. lot of women. Like it's been 50/50. And it's not just like, oh, the girls with her boyfriend, so she's here. It's like, no, they're they're into it. <laughs> They like that shit, and why not? Like, D- I think that's what's D- cool D- about our D and D group is that it is. It's half. It's females, half, and half. half males. Yeah. yeah, it adds a lot of diversity and it adds a lot of different like play styles and opinions on how we should go about stuff, which I find great. Mm-hmm. Where should we go next? Yeah, I, I like the fact that we have the. Uh, what is that in the center? That's a grub. No, that that. Oh, bre- a brown orange thing. That's a shop. Is that the That's leg one dude? of the shops. I can't remember. We have to go to uh, Leg Eater. I thought Leg Eater was down in Deep Nest, though. Uh, is Leg Eater a mantis? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, I can look it up really quick. Yeah, but... if, if you want to. I forget what that symbol is, and it's not exactly on the chart. Let's see. Um, we, we can... I want to hunt down one more of those... Um, Dreamers, but like everything in life, uh, you always gain a perception of something, and it's until you actually explore it that yeah. you actually break those perceptions, which is then fortunately that comes with like stereotypes. One hundred percent, buddy. Oh, this guy. Yeah, where's he at? Um, Deep Nest, right? I forgot about him. He's in the fungal wastes. Okay, fungal wastes. Well, near we'll the entrance to the Forgotten Crossroads. Forgotten Crossroads. There we go. Um, I'm going to get that fixed so when we do actually talk to the Grim Troop, it, it can trigger it or whatever. But yeah, I always had, there's something about, there was always felt like a grunginess to like that old fantasy art. And some of it's really cool. Like if you look at like Frank Frazetta's stuff, like that mm-hmm. kind of fantasy art, I really enjoy. Oh, I can't, can't, oh, I can't even equip it. Yeah. But I think something that's always bothered me with some of the fantasy kind of genres, the humans, they go for such high realism, and I've never been a big fan of realistic art. It's cool, and it's impressive, and it's interesting to look at every now and then, but on some level, when someone can illustrate a really, like, perfect representation of almost a photographic of a person, yeah, I'm like, that's cool, and that's impressive, but I don't really care at the same time, too. Uh- There's just... There feels like there's a lack of imagination. It's a really cool skill to have, but for me in drawing, I'd rather draw something interesting and new and dynamic and maybe that people haven't seen before. Um, yeah, I can see that instead of just elements, direct realism. Indirect realism. And a lot of the fantasy art is more realistic and oh, kind of like the cloths and robes and all the armor and stuff was more... Uh, reflective of what it would actually look like in a real like setting. Yeah. So for myself when I was growing up It just didn't really hold much weight. When I you see saw, it. Like, you're like, like Fuck I can't go this way when you're watching things of like Dragon Ball Z or Final Fantasy which would take those concepts but elevate it and Kind of explode them to a different level. Mm-hmm. It yeah, always it, was, it adds a stylized yeah. uh, it was more asset to it. Yes, there's a more stylized approach to it, and that spoke more to me. Yeah, and that's that something makes, that, that makes total sense. It's yeah. it's boring to see stuff that you see every day. It's more intriguing to see stuff. And that that's like, one oh, reason why I couldn't really get into Harry Potter because it was just that this is oversimplifying, it, and obviously it isn't just that. It has that wizard mixed with old English boarding school style. Yeah. And something about the book covers, they just never really spoke to me. The, so I was The art for the book covers is definitely kind of like uh. Yeah, they never really spoke to me and when I'd see the uh, Star Wars books, it'd be these cool guys in these like monk-like robes fighting off on like a giant spire in the middle of Nova with laser swords and it's raining. Yeah. And there's a guy in a cloak and I'm like that looks fucking awesome. It's I like ideal that. it's whoops, I don't uh, it was like your idealized fantasy type of thing where you're yeah, like, it oh, just it, imme- cool. it immediately pulls me in because there's something intriguing already. Most of the Harry Potter covers with a little goofy kid with glasses and a scar on his face <laughs> and he's riding a broomstick. I'm just, eh. Well, it was young adult uh, yes. fiction. 
Whereas uh, Star Wars is a little bit like, I, w I would say older. A little bit older, like, yeah. Like, uh, kind of young adult also, I, I guess, but... It Joke's seems on like me, though. I stopped older. reading. Fuck, he is right. He is right fucking across the way to my left, isn't he? I think I've told this story before, but when I was in uh, <laughs> high school, my English teacher told me, oh, these books are too low level for you, but yeah, I was still reading yeah. the series. So I kind of just said, eh, I'll take a C for the English class. I'm okay with not reading. <laughs> I still read articles all the time. Um, I read every day, but I wish I did read more books. Yeah, Jen, dude. Ah, I forgot he explodes. Uh, Jen is finishing books in like a week now. Jeez. Since she's got her Kindle. She yeah. absolutely, she's like, yeah, I need another book. I was like, didn't you just get that? And she's like, yeah, I started it five days ago. I'm like, how many pages is it? And she's like, oh, blah, 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 there's many hundreds of pages. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I can read comic books like that and just go through them and just visual novels I'm great with, but books themselves, not so much. Yeah. Where is he? He is crossed and down, I think. Something about the comic book, the act added visual elements, it's not that it helps. Mm -hmm. It gets more straightforward. It cuts the fat. I was about to say, it seems like it oh. It seems like it breaks things up, too, whereas yes. just a book with words is just a book with words. But if you have comic book form or visual novel form, you see a lot of it uh, can be broken up. It doesn't have to be through words. Wait, what the fuck? There's also just, as an artist, it speaks to me even more. Can I? Oh, I need to get down. Because I look at it and go, oh man, this would be cool to draw. Oh man, look how they drew Wolverine. Oh man, <laughs> look at this like comic that has nothing to do with superheroes, but it's so cool, like Persepolis or Blankets. Um, what is Blankets? Blankets is a story about a guy growing up in Michigan and how he dealt with... Um, growing up in a very religious background and Ew. how it kind of affected him uh, socially oh, and um, in a lot of other ways. Uh -huh. So in some ways, uh, Blanket spoke to me because it's almost reflective of what how I grew up, growing up predominantly Christian and then kind of growing out of Christianity and still taking on some of the lessons that I learned from it, but forging my own path. Yeah. And a lot of that book is about that kind of journey that that young character has. Okay. Where is Leg Eater from here? Um, I thought he was right here. It's is in he... the fungal wastes. So oh, it's down. in the fungal wastes? Yeah, it's in okay. the fungal wastes. I thought you said he's right by the fungal wastes. Let me see. Oh, okay. I, I see where he is. Then. In some ways, yeah. it's been almost me bucking the trend. Ah, like, I've, oh, I've never seen Harry Potter. I guess I'm going to never still see it. Kind well, it's you being uh, uh, what, a contrarian. Contrarian, yeah. yeah I was the same way for Bioshock. When that game came out, everyone's like, this game's amazing. I was like, fuck everybody. I'm not playing that game. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I, and then, I like, had the same when I hadn't had a, a Whopper or a Big Mac yeah. until I was like over 23, 24, 25, something like that. Um, I was like, no, why ruin it now? And it's like, well, I'm not really ruining anything. Well, I got a Whopper story for you, but uh, next time. Yeah, next time, guys. Beep, boop, boop. So I got my Fragile Charm changed uh, over, so we can find out where to go get the rest of this essence, and then we can go up to the Grim Troop. Yeah, and, and start uh, that. And start that up, too. But once we get the 24 Essence, we'll go to Seer, and she'll fill us in with some more information. Sounds good. Uh, we can gather up the rest of our grubbies, too, because I think we're only missing two grubs. We are. 